all new Dr. Phil. I love Chris Dr. Phil. Chris loves me. You both love the same guy. An obsessed love triangle. I've been in a lot of these cat fights before. You said she's a fat lesbian whore. Yes. And you say she's a psycho. Most definitely. Aileen posted a lot of bad comments about Sandy online. Sandy says, I am thankful for my electric blanket. Aileen responds, with all that fat, you need an electric blanket? They both claim they're the one he loves. You say you were engaged to Chris. He gave me this ring. We looked at wedding dresses. But what does he say? Did you ask her to marry you? Not that I can recall. Do you have trouble being unclear? I do sometimes. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. I hate to see people suffering, and you've hurt long enough. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Oh, take I'm going to get you. In five, four, This is going to be a changing day in your life. Go, Dr. Phil. How you doing? Hey, hey. How are y'all? Well, today, two women fighting over one guy. Sound like a dream come true for most men, right? But this love triangle has turned into a nightmare for him. Talking about our guest, Chris. He is caught between his ex-wife, Sandy, and his ex-girlfriend, Aileen. Now, he's not with either one of them at the moment, but says they are each obsessed with getting him back. Now, both women say they are sure, sure, that they are the one that he loves. Chris and I were married about three years when our relationship started falling apart. When Chris and I divorced our daughter and I moved out of the home. A few months after Sandy moved out of the house, I got a roommate. Christopher had put an ad on Craigslist. I answered it. Christopher opened the door and I said, oh my God, this guy is so good looking. After about a month, Aileen and I became romantically involved. Christopher, ex-wife. Sandy did not like the fact that Christopher and I were dating. Aileen and I clashed. I thought she was a bitch. After seven years of divorce, Sandy wanted her old husband back. Before I knew it, Christopher was trying to kick me out of the house. I want Christopher back. Christopher is the love of my life. I want to be with Chris, and I want Chris back into my life. I think Sandy is a crazy, crazy bitch for breaking up our relationship. Aileen should butt out and go on with her life. Christopher and I were engaged. I considered Christopher my fiance. Christopher gave me a diamond ring for Christmas. I was never engaged to Aileen. Chris gave her a ring for her 50th birthday because he felt like nobody else would get her anything. Christopher and I had picked out wedding dresses. Christopher had his wedding tie picked out. Aileen and I had once talked about what a nice wedding would be, but we had never actually planned one for ourselves. I hate to break it to Aileen. Chris does not love her, and he's not in love with her. She thinks she's in love with Christopher, and she thinks that Christopher's in love with her. Chris loves me. Sandy really needs to know she's not going to get away with this, and I'm not going to just disappear out of Christopher's life. Sandy says Aileen is crazy will do anything just to keep Sandy away from her man, Chris. Her man, Chris. It's gotten so bad that Sandy and Chris say they've had to file a total of nine peace orders against Aileen. Aileen admits to some harassment but said Sandy deserves it because she's just using Chris for his money. Chris was able to get a peace order finally against Aileen. The peace order prevents me from having any contact with Christopher. It does not protect me or my daughter at all. I am constantly being harassed by Aileen. Aileen contacted the university I was attending to tell them I was a druggie and alcoholic. I never did that. I told them about the child support that she was not reporting, so she wouldn't get as much financial aid. At my daughter's birthday party, we heard a knock on the door. It was Child Protective Services. Aileen claimed I beat my daughter. I felt that Sandy was an unfit mother. I was just looking out for the welfare of their daughter. Because Aileen has contacted CPS, 
it has caused problems with me to get a job. Aileen knows where I live. My daughter and I are in fear when it comes to Aileen. I've driven through Sandy's apartment complex to monitor how much time Christopher spends over there. My front door mat and my wreath was stolen. I think Aileen stole my wreath. I live 45 minutes away from her. I'm not gonna drive down to steal a wreath. Aileen is crazy. Sandy is delusional. I wouldn't be surprised if she didn't try to kill us. She is that crazy. Well, charming. I've been in a lot of these cat fights before. Mm -hmm. You know, this is not my first rodeo, so I'm really interested in seeing who is going to tell me the truth today. I know things neither one of you know I know. I have private investigators, I have staffs, I have talked to people you don't even know that I've talked to and have information from. So you lie to me, I'm going to catch you in a lie. Have you been harassing her? I have not been around her, bothered her okay, in months. Now, come on. Is this really how you want to spend your time with me? I haven't been harassing her. Have you her. been harassing her? And you I say, oh, listen, I, harass I don't have, I, no, I don't, whoa, 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 what, me? Ooh. I'm have you been harassing her? No, I have not. Oh, you have not been harassing her. All right, well, here's a list no, of no. harassment <laughs> that Aileen admits to. She told Chris' neighbors she would kill Sandy. She, you admit that? I didn't admit I was going to kill her. She was sitting in my bedroom. Did you call the university loan office to tell them that Sandy gets child support? Yes, and I did. Therefore, she shouldn't be getting a loan. Is yes, that harassment? I did. I did that three years ago, yes. Okay, so, yes. Did you call the adoption agency to get info on Sandy? No, because I had the paperwork from the house. Chris's documents, of course. So you sold his documents. They were Why did you tell there. us that you called the, the adoption agency? Okay, I called the adoption agency, but... Thank you. Number. So you called the adoption agency. Is this really how you want to spend your time where I have to ask you things five times no. before you tell me the truth? No. Come on. You've called CPS two times to report Sandy. Yes. They came to her daughter's birthday party. I didn't know when they came. Yeah, well, that's when they came. Did you send a letter to Sandy's boyfriend in 09 yes, and I cause did. him to break up? Yes, I did. You don't consider that harassment? That is. Did you cancel Sandy's birthday reservations at a restaurant? Yes, I did. So you knew that she had a, a reservation at a restaurant with Chris? Yes. And so you called the restaurant and said, hey, this is Sandy. I need to cancel for tonight. And they show up and they got no reservation. Yes. Okay. Did you get her car towed? Yes, I did. Okay. <laughs> did you ask friends that were working in the collections business to snoop into her credit? Yes. Did you nickname her the queen? Yes. Have you called her slut, lesbian, whore, bitch, gold digger, liar, and alcoholic? Yes. You took photos of her at the post office? Yes. And then a few days ago, you filed a lawsuit against her now? She threw all my stuff out of Christopher's house. You don't house. know about this, but she's now sued you in small claims court. That's awesome, because you know why? The sheriff's department was there on Victon, and they actually took it out to the curb with us. Yeah. But you filed a lawsuit, right? Yes. Okay. See how much faster things go when you tell, <laughs> when you tell the truth? Okay. Goes pretty well, right? Yes, it does. How about you? You've been harassing her? I contacted her um, employment to find out and let them know what she does to children because she works at a daycare location. I sent an email to her aunt to have her to stop and leave us alone, and I sent an email to her father because of her posting a check of ours with a routing account number online because of that filing. And this is all because you both love the same guy. I love Chris Dr. Field, but I, like I've told him, Am I in love with him? No. Is he in love with me? No. Are we taking it slow? Yes. It's not just about Chris and me anymore. It's about our daughter. And our daughter is our number one concern. Do I want Chris back? Yes. And you want to be with Chris? Yes, I've been with him for six and a half years.
So you sent a letter to where she works? No, I called. You called? I called. And did they tell you about that? Yes. They and and what, they, what kind of work do you do? I work in a business office in a daycare center. And the human resource told me one day that somebody with a southern accent had called reporting that I had federal and criminal charges and that I was a child molester and that I shouldn't be working around kids and that I should be fired. I've got documentation of that. and Well, my... actually, I do, too. Hmm? And they didn't say all of that. The letter they sent to you on 717 of this year said, yesterday at 341, I received oh, an anonymous call at our main office number from a woman with a southern accent, as you say, okay. asking to speak with someone in human resources. She told me that she wanted to warn us that we implored a woman who was dangerous and abusive okay. and that she, the caller, was concerned for the welfare mm -hmm. of the children in our care. She then proceeded to tell me that this person had broken state and federal laws and would soon be served at work. I told her that all of our employees have a thorough criminal background check prior to their first day of work and we will be notified if there is any problem with the law. I checked the caller ID and found out that the call came from Sandra's phone. I spoke to our employee Aileen and told her that threatening and personal phone calls are not permitted at work and that she needed to make sure that we did not receive any more crank calls of this nature. So they call you in and tell you, don't you have people calling up here trashing you anymore? <laughs> okay, sorry, I'll cut back on the trash phone calls. All right, coming up, we're going to find out why Aileen created an alter ego named Claudia in order to keep tabs on her nemesis. And later, we're going to meet Mr. Wonderful. Because Chris is here. We're going to talk to him and find out how he feels about being in this crossfire. We'll be right back. When I think about Sandy, I feel disgusted. When I think about Aileen, I feel sorry for her. I personally don't think she's attractive. Sandy's fat. She's psycho. Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil. I believe that my mom killed my sister's best friend and buried her in the backyard. Our daughter's outrageous accusations. You said you were passed around to your dad's friends at sex parties. Did this happen? No. Are her recollections real? I have memories, and I have memories. Or just her imagination? Tracy is crazy. Now. You sit here accused of molesting your daughter and murdering multiple people. Is everybody ready to hear the truth here? I need to know if this is real. None of it happened. Oh, my God. No, you don't get to do this. It is not a response to say, oh, well, I just, oh. If you want to unplug, we're done. Monday. When I think about Sandy, I feel disgusted. When I think about Aileen, I feel sorry for her. Sandy's a slut. Sandy has dated a serial rapist. Sandy will sleep with any man that will sleep with her. What's important for people to know is she's psycho. Nobody wants her around. I personally don't think she's attractive. Sandy's fat. At one point, she was living with a girl, so she might a lesbian whore. What Aileen needs to know is she needs to get help. What Sandy doesn't realize is your past always catches up with you and karma will get her. Um, she's fat? <laughs> you're, you're no minnow. I know. You said she's a f fat lesbian whore. I said that. And you, you say she's a psycho? Yes, most definitely. I mean, she even threw our wedding bench away, and me and Chris aren't even together anymore. What's a wedding bench? The bench that we got when we got married that was sitting outside our home. Oh. That's been sitting there for years. I just put it on the curb. Well, I've been married 37 years, and I don't have a wedding bench. <laughs> you didn't put it on your wedding registry. Oh, okay. <laughs> you got to listen. So you... 
you've been with Chris for six and a half years. Yes. And you, you two were in love. Yes. You say you were engaged to Chris. Early on, in like 2008 or nine. He gave you a ring. He gave me this ring this last ring, year. This ring, you may see it? Yes. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. Now, that's an engagement ring. He bought it for me for my 50th birthday. We're not engaged, but I think there's feelings there. Did, did he say that that was an engagement ring? No, he ring? did not. Did he ask you to marry him? Long time ago when we were engaged, yes. Oh, you were engaged? We were. But he didn't ask no, you to marry this him. one here, no, I'm not engaged. He bought me this ring because I wanted it. But I, he says that we're just friends. But I don't think friends just buy somebody a one-carat diamond ring. But when did he ask you to marry him? In 2008 or 9, and then we split up. We didn't really split up. One day he just said, we're not getting married. But we continue to live together. But you were engaged. He did ask you to marry. How did yes. he do it? It was just, it wasn't ever like a proposal. It was just something he wrote my dad and sent him an email one time. He you said, have copied that email? He said, no, because Christopher deleted it off of the computer. He had said, you know, I, I would like to marry her to make her happy. We had looked at wedding dresses. He's got, we had picked out his uh, tie. And then just one day, we're driving in the car and he's. Like, we're not getting married. There was no explanation, nothing. And that's something that's, you know, kind of... Well, that hurts. Yeah. There was never, like, a formal proposal, as you say, you know. But it was just an understanding that we were going to get married. Yeah. Because usually... Well, usually, yeah, there is... There's a there, question. There, there is a... There is a... Because I remember when Robin asked me to marry her. <laughs> yes, I told you, honey, yes, I didn't ask. There was never like a proposal either. There but but you did wind up married. Unfortunately, But that's yeah. kind of gone downhill because now he has a protection order against you. Yeah, he does. Now she's pulling him away and starts spending, he starts spending time with her because he wants to be with his daughter. He tells me that he just wants to spend time with his daughter, which I didn't have a problem with, but every Wednesday he'd go eat dinner at her house and she'd be posting stuff on Facebook. On you your know, bank account that you're still watching. Chris and I are a family. Chris and I cuddle on the couch. You know, Christopher calls me during the day to send me little notes to say I love you. Did you know, you... Chris is my baby, loving my baby. I mean... Every day, something that, different. That just chapped your ass, right? That yeah, I mean, every single day, because I know him, and Chris does not sit there and cuddle on the couch, and, you know. Obviously, say it's who he's with, that thank he's you. with. Thank you for, you know, thank you for second chances. She's calling his well, Did you harass parents. her on Facebook? If she made a comment, I would make a comment back. Oh, wait. Ring nothing ring inappropriate back. just to comment back. Some were inappropriate. She put her inappropriate things Did, did you me. have a... Did, did you have a fake ID? Christopher and I had made one years ago on Facebook. So you did go on using yes. a, a false ID so you could get Keep track of friended. She friend when I sent her a friend, she accepted the request, and then later on, you say she that's because she's desperate for any friends she can find. At one at one point, she had over a thousand friends. Is that bad to have a thousand friends? No, but I just don't think that you. I just think that you don't personally know that many people. You get a request? No, it's not, but I'm just saying. Bill, can I ask a question? Well, I've got millions. Is that, well, does that mean something wrong with me? No, but you're like Dr. Phil. We're just like regular people. <laughs> Sandy says, I am thankful for my snooze button and electric blankets. So Aileen is Claudia. Response. With all that fat, you need an electric blanket? <laughs> Next week on Dr. Phil. At age 19, I was married to the prophet of the FLDS people. This 85-year-old man who has 64 other wives. A former sect member confronts her polygamous father. My father condones my marriage. How does that make sense to a father to marry his daughter off to the crypt keeper?
In order to keep tabs on Sandy and I, Aileen has used several fake profiles on Facebook. I used a fake name of somebody that she went to high school with. Aileen posted a lot of bad comments about Sandy online. Aileen has called me a whore, a bitch, a gold digger. Sandy would post about how they were a couple and she was in love with Christopher and that he loves her. When I see these posts, I know that they're lies. Okay, well, actually, um, that's kind of interesting. But I, I said I had a lot of information that y'all didn't know I had. I actually was able to go backwards and capture a lot of those exchanges between you as Claudia mm. and and you. They're probably bad. I'm not I'm not gonna deny it. Well, here's what Sandy posted. Sandy, I am thankful for my health and everybody that stood beside me through the years when I didn't know if I would see the next day. Well Aileen as Claudia says too bad you didn't drop dead. She just posted that because she wants sympathy from other people. I don't need sympathy. Sandy says, I am thankful for my snooze button and electric blanket. I enjoyed sleeping in a little while longer today. Thankful for the omelet my baby made and served me in my bed. <laughs> so Aileen as Claudia responds, with all that fat, you need an electric blanket? <laughs> really? I don't need an electric blanket, and I'm fat, too, so... And you don't have Chris sleeping in your bed any longer, either, do you? <clears throat> oh, and you do? Many nights a week. Well, I hope he gets tested. Sandy says, dinner is served, and puts a picture of dinner. Aileen as Claudia says, you cook this sh last time. <laughs> Pasta, biscuits, meat, green beans, no variety. No wonder you're so blinking fat. <laughs> Sandy, having dinner with the in-laws and loving our family. Aileen, as Claudia says, bitch, you are divorced. <laughs> they are not your in-laws. So Sandy Post ordered our dog Caesar his Christmas outfit for pictures so he will match everyone. Love my doggy. Aileen Post, you dumb bitch. Why do you continue to lie? You walk that dog like once. Sandy says, with my wonderful daughter and Chris. We discussed all we're thankful for, and my daughter said she was thankful for parents that love her and having our family back together. That means a lot to us both. Aileen, as Claudia says, so sorry that her family getting back together will be short-lived. Your daughter has had so much turmoil in her life, no wonder she has so many issues. She has had turmoil in her life. She's also adopted, and I kept mine. You didn't have yours. Sandy says the best thing in life is finding someone who knows all your flaws, mistakes, weaknesses, and still thinks you're completely amazing. Aileen, as Claudia says, OMG, this is so funny. You have a bunch of flaws. You're fat. Your blank smells like dead fish. You're a cheater. And your biggest mistake was moving here, but that won't last long, and you're amazing in your own mind. You're blank. <clears throat> really? Christopher told me that. Very classy. Okay, that wasn't one of my class For a 50-year-old lady, that means a lot, lot, right? I'm sure everyone is dying to know what is so great about this guy, Chris? Does he have some magic elixir or powers that have put a spell on these two women? So I'm going to bring him out here, but you can't be here because there's a no contact order by the court. You can't be in contact with him. Okay. I'm, and so I'm going to have you go off. Okay. 
and we're going to put you in the green room with full monitoring. You'll be able to see everything. You'll be okay. able to hear everything. You'll be able to talk, but you're going to need to talk to me. Okay. You can't talk to him. Okay. So I'm going to move people and furniture and cameras and <laughs> do everything I can to stay within the spirit of this agreement. We'll be right back. I want Chris back into my life. And I don't really consider us a romantic couple. I am hoping that Christopher and I will work towards getting married someday. Aileen can't understand that I don't love her anymore. I want Chris back into my life. Chris will spend the night with us. He will have dinner with us. But we are not having sex. And we will not until the time is right. And I don't really consider us a romantic couple. If we didn't share a daughter together, I don't think that Sandy and I would have a relationship. Chris and I are very happy, and we have a family. I miss Christopher every day. I feel that Christopher, in his own way, he does love me. I mean, there's feelings there. They may be buried. I mean, every couple goes through ups and downs. Aileen can't understand that I don't love her anymore. I am hoping that Christopher and I will work towards getting married someday. I do not want a romantic relationship with Aileen because of the problems. We really can't even be friends. I think Christopher needs to see that I've changed and that I deserve a second chance. At this point, I need for Aileen to move on and out of my life. The most important thing to me is to be a good parent and focus on what's in the best interest of my family. Well, we've been talking about Chris, but he is here. So Chris, come on out and join us. How are you doing? Good to meet you. Have a seat right here, if you would. Um, now, um, in accordance with the uh, protection order that you filed with the court, you were listening before, Aileen is not out here. She is uh, watching this. Why are you in this mess? This is like a tug of war and you're the rope. It's, it's complicated. Um, I, the best way to, to explain it is it's really progressed. <clears throat> and there were, were signs that, you know, should have done some something differently a while well, how, ago. How did you and Sandy meet? Um, you, you two met, you were married how long, how many years? We got married in 01 and divorced in 08. Okay, so, so seven. you're seven years. And how, how did y'all meet? Online. And then how did you meet Aileen? Um, I was looking for a roommate after Sandy left. I had uh, posted some things. You met her, and then she moved in, but it wasn't a romantic thing until later. It was fairly soon. It, it wasn't... Uh, like 30 days, a week, uh, 20 minutes? Less, what? I'm, 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 what, what I'll say is less than 30 days. Did you ask her to marry you? I have not. And you never asked her to marry you? I, not that I can recall. Did you go that, pick out her wedding dress with her? I remember looking. I don't remember the reason. It was not to plan a... Hey, Aileen, you wanted to say something? We had planned uh, to have the wedding in South Carolina, if he recalls that. Because we were supposed to get married June 26th, um, <clears throat> 2010. Okay. And the daisy tie, that was for the wedding. Yeah. But that was, um, I, I believe that, that she kind of prompted this. And we just discussed, you know, if if we do this at some point, what what would we like? What are our um, Do you have trouble being unclear with people? <laughs> I do sometimes. Because you sound like you're being unclear okay. now. Yeah. Because I'm asking you some questions that really aren't essay questions, but right. I'm getting a lot of essay answers. She was looking at these things and, you know, what what do you think of this? You know, when, you know, if, if if you were to get married, would this be nice? And you, at this point, Aileen, you want to marry Chris. That would be my ultimate goal, but I don't see that as happening. I, I would just like to be in his life. 
Did no. I not tell you that y'all could be friends, but she would not be near my daughter? That's did I not? Yes. No, you did not. I did. You were not in my house. Yeah. You have no clue. Do you want your daughter around, yeah. Aileen? No, I don't. Why not? Her, her intentions just to hurt um, several people, and, and my daughter may not be um, the direct target, but, but she takes a lot of the emotional brunt of everything that happens mm -hmm. because um, things that hurt us really hurt her. So this is hurting your daughter? Yes. And so you think Aileen is causing pain to your daughter? Unquestionably. Yes. Uh -huh. How do you feel about that, Aileen? They're, both, they're both saying that you are causing pain to their child. Okay, I don't mean to cause pain to their daughter. She has told their daughter over and over what kind of bad person I am. You know, she has, Sandy has gone to, as far as contacting my ex-husband and get information from his wife about what happened with my divorce. You know, that is none of her business. I think we should talk about that a little bit. There's more to this story when we come back. Chris and I are not the only ones that's been harassed by Aileen. After Aileen and her ex-husband divorced, he got back with his childhood sweetheart. Francina. Aileen did not like this at all. I have nothing to hide and Sandy's just looking for dirt on me. Monday on an all new Dr. Phil. She accuses her mother of sex abuse and murder. Are her recollections real? I have memories and I have memories. None of that. Is everybody ready to hear the truth here? That's Monday. I was furious with Christopher for wanting me to move out. I was going to make his life a living hell. Aileen lost her mind and started doing crazy things. I took all the door handles off, every single door. Aileen told the neighbor that she was going to kill me. I would leave all the lights on in the house. I would run the water. Aileen would send text messages to Chris. I am flooding your house. I hope you don't care. My house felt like a war zone. Well, that was just a small list of things Chris and Sandy say Aileen has done to get revenge. Now, Aileen admits to a lot of it, and Sandy says she is sick of being harassed by this woman. But the truth is, Sandy is not the only one who says Aileen has crazy behavior. Aileen's ex-husband's current wife, Francina, says she went through the exact torture Sandy is going through now. Take a look. Chris and I are not the only ones that's been harassed by Aileen. Aileen has done this before to her ex-husband and his wife. After Aileen and David divorced, he got back with his childhood sweetheart, Francina. Aileen did not like this at all. Aileen started calling in fake Child Protective Services reports on Francina. Francina became friends with Sandy because Sandy tried to get information about me and my past. Francina and I have become friends because we feel like we're going through the same thing with Aileen. Aileen has stopped harassing Francina because she now has Chris and I to harass. Francina has told me that Aileen will continue to stalk and bother me until she finds a new target. I am in fear that until she does find a new target, that she will make my life a living hell. I have nothing to hide and Sandy's just looking for dirt on me. Well, Aileen, what's your response to that? I mean, is that true? Did you harass that woman the way you've admitted harassing this one? The resentment I have towards Francina is if I'd call to try to talk to my daughters, she would be like, they're not home, you know. Um, did you uh, did you ruin their credit by ordering a bunch of stuff in their name? I didn't ruin their credit. Did you order a bunch of stuff in their name? I didn't order a bunch of stuff. I ordered pizzas and magazines. Pizzas and magazines. Well, yeah. it's interesting. I, I'm looking at the Twitter feed up here and seeing what our viewers at home are saying. Uh, Vicki Whitworth says, wake up, people. This child deserves better role models. None of you are 13. 
Uh, Helen Lusk, 1957, says, For someone who is such a smooth talker, he's sure stuttering around. <laughs> uh, Fifi Flea says, There's a lot of denial and deception going on here. This man has been playing both women, and he should admit it. Um, <laughs> they, they think you're being unclear, apparently. And you said sometimes you are less than clear. Yeah. This is a great time for clarity. Okay. Are you uh, interested in reconciling uh, with Sandy? I believe as, as far as... Uh, Good point. As, as far as, you know, just being very close and, and co-parenting together, we already have. We are, we're doing that. Um, have I decided, you know, yes or no that, that I... Definitely want a romantic relationship. I have not. And so if I'm not certain, the answer is going to be no. But that's something we had both agreed on, that we're happy. Do we love each other? Yes. Are we in love? No. But do we want to be the parents that our child needs? Yes. I'd like to state my opinion on this. I, I've been accused of lying and accused of, of playing them, and I'd like to know how it is that I'm doing this. And I've never suggested to anyone that, you know, I'm a smooth type of character. Well, that's so, not an so opinion. I, that's, a, really... that's not an opinion. That's a question. But I right. will answer it right so, after so the I, break. I'd like to know. I'll answer it. Yeah. We can't do this show without you, our studio audience. If you are going to be in the Los Angeles area and you would like free tickets, go to drfill.com and click on "Be in the Audience." Because we have a lot of fun here, don't we? Or you can call 323-461-PHIL. That's 323-461-7445. My family and I are living in fear of Aileen. One of my greatest fears is that Aileen won't get over the situation. And I am afraid that she might escalate her behavior and things could even get worse. When someone is crazy, you never know what they will do next. Everybody thinks I'm the bad person. All I try to do is try to keep my relationship together. And I think she's just flat out crazy. I hope Dr. Phil thinks she's crazy. And I hope he tells her. Well, Sandy and Aileen say they both love Chris. Uh, they both want him back. But what does he want? Let's start with Aileen. Do you hope for look for or entertain the possibility of a reconciliation with Aileen? No, I, I don't think that would be, th there'd be any reason for Would you that like to go to point. couples therapy with Aileen no. and work on this and try to see if there's a basis here for a relationship? No. Um, I think that my, my children are, uh, you know, in fear of her and, and have been violated and, and she's <clears> crossed <throat> the line. Oh, the only reason that his daughter is in fear of me is because of what um, S Sandy has told her. You said earlier, I hope Dr. Phil tells Sandy that she's crazy. You said, I think she is. I hope he tells her that. What would be your basis? What, what would you think I would support that well, diagnosis on? She met Christopher. She got gastric bypass <clears throat> surgery. Right. She got him to adopt her a child because she couldn't have a child. Right. She got LASIK. Okay. She cheated on him twice. She left once. He took her back. A couple months later, she cheated on him again. All right, so you, you made a good list there. Um, how is LASIK crazy? Getting well, LASIK? it's not. I'm just saying her behavior over the years. And okay, well, I, but you listed what those behaviors were that you wanted me to base a diagnosis of her being deranged on. And on that list, you well, had that I mean, she okay. got Lasix. Her, well, no, not Lasix, but her posts on Facebook about Chris and I are together, Chris and I are a family, um, my in-laws, they're divorced. I mean, in her mind, if you go back and look at all her Facebook posts, <clears throat> she makes it sound like they're a family, not, she, not like what she's presenting now. Chris and I are just try, trying to raise a child together. So, In what way is gastric bypass crazy? That is not a crazy issue. Just okay, so we could take Lasix okay. and gastric bypass yeah, yeah, off. Yeah, you could of take it. those off. So basically what we're down to is you think 
she is delusional about the status of her relationship yes, with Chris. Yes, yes, that is very delusional. Mm -hmm. And that she uses social media platforms to antagonize you by presenting things as other than they are. Correct. Would that be a fair summary? That would be a fair summary, and she mm -hmm. lies a lot. And I mean, she's a liar and a thief no. and a cheater. You forgot that she dated a serial rapist. She did. She did do that. Christopher can verify that. These would seem to be relationship issues, not issues that Aileen should burden herself with. Correct. Okay. I have... Let's take a break. When we come back, I'm going to try to sort this out and make some sense, and then we're done. You've all heard me talk about Doctor On Demand, the exciting new app that my son Jay and I created that allows you within seconds to visit face to face with a board certified doctor using your smartphone. Now, usually our Doctor On Demand visits cost just forty dollars, about the cost of a copay. But we have been tracking the cold and flu outbreaks, and since Jay and I own the company, we get to make the decisions and have decided that from now until February twenty eighth. All Doctor On Demand calls are free, instant and free. Download the Doctor On Demand app from iTunes App Store or Google Play and talk to a doctor now. And yes, it's free until February 28th. Stop justifying your inactivity and avoiding the challenge of change. For help getting started, go to DrPhil.com for 11 seasons of advice, articles, and exclusive videos you won't find anywhere else. Plus, sign up for the Dr. Phil community to share your story and find support from others, all on DrPhil.com. Is there any, Chris, is there any equivocation, ambiguity whatsoever about whether or not you want to re-engage and have a relationship with Aileen? No, I, I've decided that's not possible. You see no wiggle room here whatsoever? No. Uh, do you want to continue a relationship with Sandy? Um, I like the relationship that we have. Aileen, wh what do you think about what is being said here? At this point, I don't, e I don't even know what to say. I mean, I had thought maybe he was open to something. Marriage wouldn't even be in the picture. I just was looking for if, you know, if we could be friends. I, I think this. I, I think, Aileen, that you have a, a problem with boundaries. I, I think you have trouble letting go once you get invested. And I think you hang on with real desperation sometimes. And I think that you need some help with that. And I am offering to get you some help with this so you have an opportunity to sort out your thoughts and your feelings and, and your beliefs. And at that point, you may look at this a whole lot differently. Will you allow me to make that gift to you? Yes. Because you're certainly not getting anywhere the way you are, right? I mean, people are running away from you, not towards you. Dr. Phil, may I say something? No, you may not say anything. <laughs> I'm having a conversation with this woman about her life. It's totally inappropriate for you to interject. Sorry. Go ahead. Thank you for that. That wasn't the gift I was offering. The no, gift I was I'm, offering... <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, was, I, I mean, it's somebody that finally has told her to be quiet while they're trying to talk. Yeah. Because that's never happened. Okay, well, now it's happened. Thanks for being here today. You go to drphil.com for more information. Chris, thank you so much.